Good evening, and welcome to Third Church, New York City. We're so glad to have you here with us. Each one of you adds to the richness of this healing service. Let's, let's start by singing hymn number 322. I'll read the first verse. Sweet hour of holy, thoughtful prayer, thy peace and calm may we improve and in God's healing service share the truths revealed by his dear love. Hymn number 322. I'll read from the Bible and correlative passages from Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures by Mary Baker Eddy. This week's readings were inspired by the concept of forgiveness and mercy. From the Holy Bible, Daniel. To the Lord our God belong mercies and forgivenesses. Ephesians, be ye kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. Matthew, <clears throat> then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me, and I forgive him? Till seven times? Jesus said unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king, which would take account of his servants. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him which owed him ten thousand talents. But forasmuch as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold, and his wife, and his children, and all that he had, and payment to be made. The servant therefore fell down and worshipped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion and loosed him, and forgave him the debt. But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him an hundred pence. And he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, 
repay me that thou owest. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. But he would not, but went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry and came and told unto their Lord all that was done. Then his Lord, after that he had called him and said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that debt because thou des desirest me. Shouldest not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? And his Lord was wroth, and delivered him to the tormentors, till he should be pay all that was due unto him. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if ye from your hearts forgive not every one of his brothers their trespasses. Mark. And Jesus moved with compassion. And Jesus moved with compassion, put forth his hand and touched him and saith unto him, I will be thou clean. And they came unto him bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when, they had sp and when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. But there were certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts, why does this man thus speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God only? And immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they so reasoned within themselves, he said unto them, Why reason ye these things in your hearts? Whether it is easier to say to the sick of the palsy, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise, and take up thy bed, and walk but that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. He saith to the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, Arise, and take up thy bed, and go thy way into thine house. And immediately he arose, took up the bed, and went forth before them all, insomuch that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, We never saw it on this fashion. Luke, love your enemies and do good, and lend, hoping for nothing again, and your reward shall be great, and ye shall be the children of the highest, for he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. Be ye, therefore, merciful, as your Father also is merciful. Judge not, and ye shall not be judged. Condemn not and ye shall not be condemned. Take heed to yourselves. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. And if he repent, forgive him. And when they were come to the place which is called Calvary, there they crucified him, and the malefactors, one on the right hand and the other on the left, then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Second Corinthians. To whom ye forgive anything, I forgive also. For if I forgive anything, to whom I forgive it, for your sakes forgave I it in the person of Christ. Matthew, after this manner, therefore, pray ye. 
and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Psalms. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Yea, our God is merciful. Return unto thy rest, O my soul, for the Lord hath dealt bountifully with thee. For thou hast delivered my soul from death, mine eyes from tears, and my feet from falling. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord of heaven, for his mercy endureth forever. And from the Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures by Mary Baker Eddy. The prayer that reforms the sinner and heals the sick is an absolute faith that all things are possible to God, a spiritual understanding of him, and unselfed love. The attributes of God are justice, mercy, wisdom, goodness, and so on. God is love. Can we ask him to be more? The divine being must be reflected by man, else man is not the image and likeness of the patient, tender, and true, the one altogether lovely. But to understand God is the work of eternity and demands absolute consecration of thought, energy, and desire. Divine love corrects and governs man. Men may pardon, but this divine principle alone reforms the sinner. God is not separate from the wisdom he bestows. The talents he gives, we must improve. Calling on him to forgive our work badly done or left undone implies the vain supposition that we have nothing to do but to ask pardon and that afterwards, we shall be free to repeat the offense. Scientific translation of mortal man, of mortal mind, second degree, evil beliefs disappearing, moral, humanity, honesty, affection, compassion, hope, faith, meekness, temperance. Without punishment, sin would multiply. Jesus' prayer, forgive us our debts, specified also the terms of forgiveness. When forgiving the adulterous woman, he said, go and sin no more. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And love is reflected in love. Tenderness accompanies all the might imparted by spirit. Grace and truth are potent beyond all other means and methods. Christian science commands man to master the propensities, to hold hatred in abeyance with kindness, to conquer lust with chastity, revenge with charity, and to overcome deceit with honesty. First in the list of Christian duties, he taught his followers the healing power of truth and love.
Our church is built on the divine principle, love. We could unite with this church only as we are newborn of spirit, as we reach the life which is truth and the truth which is life by bringing forth the fruits of love, casting out error and healing the sick. The destruction of sin is the divine method of pardon. Divine life destroys death. Truth destroys error. And love destroys hate. Being destroyed, sin needs no other form of forgiveness. The, par <clears throat> the pardon of divine mercy is the destruction of error. Throughout all generations, both before and after the Christian era, the Christ as the spiritual idea, the reflection of God, has come with some measure of power and grace to all prepared to receive Christ, truth. If divine love is becoming nearer, dearer, and more real to us, matter is then submitting to spirit. If selfishness has given place to kindness, we shall regard our neighbor unselfishly and bless them that curse us. We shall never meet this great duty simply by asking that it may be done. There is a cross to be taken up before we can enjoy the fruition of our hope and faith. Meekness and charity have divine authority. Let us reassure ourselves with the law of love. God never punishes man for doing right, for honest labor, or for deeds of kindness, though they expose him to fatigue, cold, heat, contagion. If man seems to incur the penalty through matter, this is but a belief of mortal mind, not an enactment of wisdom. And man has only to enter his protest against this belief in order to annul it. Let unselfishness, goodness, mercy, justice, health, holiness, love, the kingdom of heaven reign within us, and sin, disease, and death will diminish until they finally disappear. Let's pray for the congregation, first silently, then repeat together the Lord's Prayer.
the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Let's sing hymn number 401. Thou whose almighty word chaos and darkness heard and took their flight, hear us, we humbly pray, and where the gospel day sheds not its glorious ray, let there be light. Hymn number 401. This church is a branch of the Mother Church, the first church of Christ Scientist in Boston, Massachusetts. We hold Sunday services at 11 a.m. and Wednesday testimony meetings at 7.30 p.m. We also have services in Spanish, Sundays at 1 p.m. and Wednesdays at 5.30 p.m. All services are now held online and in person we thank you for observing social distancing and for wearing a mask. Third Church's reading room is open and all are welcome. The reading room provides a quiet place for prayer and study. Here you may also purchase books and recordings on Christian science. Reading room hours are Monday through Friday, 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. We offer Sunday school classes online for kids and teens. These free one-hour classes will be held each Sunday from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. At Sunday school, students learn how much God loves them and cares for them. They also learn about the Bible characters and lessons and the healing power of truth. If you know of children and teens who may be interested, Please send us an email, thirdchurch at thirdchurchnyc.com. 
the Joint Christian Science Media Projects Project invites you to the last lecture in their radio series titled Spiritual Solutions for Today's Challenges. Tune into radio station WOR 710 AM or listen on the internet at WOR 710.com. You can also listen on Third Church's website, thirdchurchnyc.com. This last lecture, starting at 8.05 p.m. this Sunday, is titled Prayer and Healing, a Spiritual Response to Fear and Contagion. Nate Frederick is the lecturer. Christian science is practical and it heals. Our meeting is now open for all to share experiences of healing and spiritual insights that prove God's ever presence and power in their lives. If you're listening by telephone and would like to share, and we hope you will, press star six and wait until your line is unmuted. If you're watching via Zoom, you can choose the raise your hand icon or unmute yourself and speak. Thank you for your readings on forgiveness. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> that's a topic that even the uh, non-religious uh, spend a great deal of time on. We know that uh, saying forgive and forget, or forget and forgive. And we also know people who say, well, I, I will forgive, but I'll never forget. Uh, and that often has, uh, could describe my mentality. Um, <clears throat> we've heard that um, um, saying these days that lack of forgiveness and hate is like a person taking a poison and hoping the other person dies. A practitioner once said to me when I was working on forgiveness, she said, you're not forgiving for the other person, you're forgiving for yourself. And I'm not sure if that's the only way to look at it in Christian science, but it is certainly uh, worth some thinking about. Um, we know within Christian science that uh, we're always demanded to take a more radical spiritual step. Uh, Mrs. Eddy um, interprets forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors as and love is reflected in love and there's a whole variety of ways of looking at that, but one of them, I suppose, is, is that the sin, the, the offense, never really occurred in the allness of love. All that was going on at that moment when the sins of others or the sins of another person were affecting us was divine principle love, the law of love. Uh, Certainly, St. Paul, it's one of those famous citations we read a lot, you know, forgetting those things behind and pressing towards the high mark of the calling of God in Christ Jesus. Um, I've been reading the reminiscences of uh, Mrs. Eddy uh, lately, and today uh, I came across one by William Ravthon, William Ravthon, I'm not sure how you pronounce his name. But he was with Mrs. Eddy her final three years. And he wrote down a whole variety of things that she said. Um, and one of them was, you must forget a mistake. Uh, if you don't forget it, you're liable to repeat it. I, that really struck me. Um, I think she probably meant you forget it after you've kind of redeemed it, but and you've been chastened for it. But to constantly go over the past is something that Mrs. Eddy didn't think was very wise. Um, and I think probably that would be true of Jesus as well in the Gospels. Um, I was thinking about that today in a whole variety of ways. 
and something she said that didn't really have to do with that but struck me. She was saying, you know, she was in her late 80s and she said, you know, I'm something like I'm really trying to demonstrate over the belief of old age. She actually often called herself old, interestingly enough. And if I were a real Christian scientist, I wouldn't have to do this. And if I were a real Christian scientist, you wouldn't see me here, she said. If I really believed that there was no life, truth, intelligence in, in matter. Um, and, but she said to the workers, if I dealt with what old age is presenting head on, I wouldn't be able to do it. So she knew she had to deal with uh, the, the whole lie of mortality by knowing the allness of God's eternality and his immortal creation. And I was thinking of, of, of the past and, and um, beginnings, middles, and ends. And I thought, you know, the things that have gone wrong in the past, sometimes you can't deal with them head on. You just have to know that within the allness of God, they never had any substance. They never had any causality, and therefore they can never have any effect within the allness of God if we're willing to put off the old man and to put on the new man. And something she says often in her writings, but that is often in the reminiscences, is that when you're dealing with malpractice, you never deal with a person, no matter how <laughs> awful that person seems to be and how awful the things he's trying to do. You never deal with the person. You deal with the fact that you cannot be deprived of the truth and the protection of truth. And so I was thinking about that in a variety of ways today, that to deal with the person is also to make yourself liable as a person to all those things, but to impersonalize in the right way takes error out of, out of the realm of reality and allows us to put off the old man. And forgiveness is one of those things that seems to be really important. And in the brief prayer, the Lord's Prayer, it's right there in the middle. So I guess it's important. So thank you for your readings. Thank you. I too love the idea of forgiveness. Um, when I feel like I need to forgive someone or something that I've been offended or been mistreated or disrespected, um, one of the first things I do is forgive myself for getting involved in someone else's drama, for believing their dream, for, um, for believing that I could be offended, or for even forgiving myself for being offended. And once I do this, it's so much easier to forgive the other person. It's so much easier to share that understanding that I've first healed in myself, um, and then realize that that other person is a child of God too, same as me, and there's usually nothing left to forgive after that. Um, I feel um, happy and respected and, and loved. But uh, I also wanted to share a healing we had last week in our house. Um, and my little dog was not feeling well and I was, I was alarmed. Um, she was uncomfortable and um, I sang hymns to her, which made her feel a lot more comfortable, and I often would read her the lesson in both Spanish and English, which she enjoyed um, and felt comfortable, but she, she wasn't getting healed completely. And I called a practitioner. I, I also prayed um, with the practitioner, and the practitioner reminded me that often when a child or an animal in a household is sick, what needs correcting is the thought of the adults in the household. And um, in my prayer, it came to me that um, I was feeling um, as though I were the boss. And behind this 
feeling of being the boss is a feeling of control and self-will. And the minute I realized that, I remembered, I think it's from a hymn, just the expression, love's sweet control, meaning, meaning God as love. So God's sweet control of our household, of what decision, how decisions were made, what just all the different things that go into a house when a household when you live with other adults. And with this, um, my thought was cleared and I was able to pray to see this little dog as a spiritual idea of God responding only to divine love, only to divine principle, physically, emotionally, spiritually. And with that, the little dog was healed. She was jumping up in her usual perches and um, happy and joyous and running down the street, uh, sometimes faster than I could keep up. But then after a day or two, uh, she seemed to have a few recurrent, a recurrence of, of some of the problems. And um, I was alarmed. Uh, I love her a lot. And I called the practitioner. And the practitioner reminded me, when there's a healing in Christian science, there is no recurrence. There can't be. Because the healing is complete holistically, from beginning to end in any way. There's no reversal. There's no it having uh, something move or change forms. And we prayed about that for a short time. And our little friend was up and jumping and completely comfortable, completely happy. Um, and so I'm, I'm really grateful that I know how to heal. Um, that when I need help, I feel comfortable calling a practitioner who can help point the way and support our prayer. And I, I'm so grateful for this system of Christian science that puts us in a community where not only do we help each other, we help people in the world. Each, each prayer for a dog or a friend or a family goes out to all dogs and families and friends because it's a universal type of a prayer. And for this, I'm deeply grateful. I wanted to express some gratitude as well for the other two speakers because whenever someone shares their understanding of the ideas we are all working to understand, it gives us a new perspective on them and maybe a new insight. I had a similar experience reading a recent Sentinel article that included the phrase, activity of God. And I had just never thought that that phrase, that particular phrasing language had never occurred to me. But that's exactly what we mean when we say the ever presence and the activity of love, the guidance of mind, that's the activity of God. And I have recently been, it brought to mind an experience of that activity, of that ever-presence, in two ways. One, I was driving along in a car filled with friends at highway speeds on a, on a two-lane road, which on one side had uh, cliffs. And on the other side had a fall off. In other words, you stayed on the road or you were in, you wanted to stay on the road. And suddenly, pull over came to mind, a voice in my head. I thought, what? So I kept driving. And then, loud, more loudly, pull over. Huh. I thought, well, you know, I do not get this. And as it happened at that moment, there was a little widening of the shoulder on my side of the road so that, in fact, I was able to pull over, and I did. 
brought the vehicle to a stop. All the passengers were looking at me, what's going on? Suddenly there was a thunk, and some substantial part of the underneath car, excuse this language, the mechanical, the car bits, underneath the car went sunk and hit the ground. So we got out and looked, and there it was, and I thought, huh, isn't that interesting? Much better for it to have happened when we were parked than when we were at speed. People got hitchhike rides, you know, and this was long before cell phones. And I eventually got a tow truck was called. And without that ever-present phrase, pull over, well, let me say, it was timely and helpful. Just recently, I was looking for an item for which there was uh, a lot of time pressure to locate it. And honest to goodness, it had just hidden itself, and I didn't know where. And I had been looking for a little while, and then I just stopped, and it occurred to me to just pause. I can't say I formally, formally prayed about it, but the incident of pull over came back to mind, and I thought, huh. So I went on and did some other things and started moving uh, other piles of paper, and lo and behold, the object I had been looking for appeared. So that's the activity of God, that ever presence of mind, whether it's in helping us to reconsider forgiveness or to re be aware that the guidance we need will arrive. And I would just like to say thank you to the musicians tonight. I love the coda to the hymn. So thank you guys for putting together an impromptu service. I'm aware of some of the difficulties involved in what looks to most of us as a seamless event. Took a lot of extra work this week. Thank you so much. Thank you. of seeing the face of God in, in people. Um, I, in doing some reading and working on the same thing, forgiveness, um, I looked at Jesus on the cross when he was uh, speaking to his father, saying, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And then I believe it was Peter who was stoned, and as right before he was, he went to sleep, he uh, looked up and the heavens had parted, and he he could see in my imagination that love was all that there was. And he asked the Father to forgive them, for they know not what they do. And I was trying to understand more fully those comments. And in understanding really what the allness of God or the allness of love is, that that is all there is, then there, there just can't be any room for any, any evil, any error. So I am working very hard these days to reach the point that that Peter reached and that that so far away from what Jesus reached, but just trying to get a glimpse of the understanding is is 
a search that is taking full-time energy. Thank you for the readings on forgiveness. They're very timely. Thank you. Thank you to all for your testimonies, your remarks, and your prayers during this healing service. Let's conclude by singing hymn number 324. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Take my moments and my days. Let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of thy love. Hymn number 324.